there are those who will say that you can't be righteous without doing righteous things, without having something to show, to prove that you're righteous. And I would ask the question, does Jesus need to do something to prove that he is righteous? In other words, do you believe he's righteous because of what he's done? Or is he righteous because of who he is? Because we assert here that you're righteous through faith. Leads to another question. Does Jesus believe in himself? I mean, why does he do those things? How does he do the things he does? Does he do them because he knows he is supposed to do them? Because it would be good to do those things? And he would then be good and righteous? Or is it because he already knows he is good and righteous? That's how he is able to do them. I want you to really think about this. Because I understand when God does something in your life, that's very powerful. And to believe in him because of that is not a, it's not an evil thing. I'm not saying it is. But I'm saying at some point, who he is should start to rise above what he does. Because I think real faith involves the person more than the actions of the person. The gifts, if you will. It has to do with something that is to his nature. The person of who he is, is righteousness, is goodness. No matter what he does, he's still good. It's not, oh, I'm God, I can do whatever I want. It's, no, I'm good, I'm righteous. I know that. That's why he always does the right thing. And so I can trust in him. And, and learning, as, as he said, you know, my, my yoke is easy, my burn, burn is light. Learn of me, learn from me. And you will have that. Because it was easy on him. Because he trusted perfectly. He had the burden of the whole world on him, but it, it wasn't a heavy burden. Because he trusted the man, Christ Jesus, trusted perfectly in the righteousness of God. So it wasn't his flesh that did those things. That's why he would say, I don't do anything. He was communicating to people who perceived him as a man. So he's saying, the man you see isn't doing anything. It's the God that you don't see that's doing it. And he doesn't wonder if he's going to do it right or not. We struggle with that because we are not God in the flesh. We are flesh that has benefited from the indwelling of the Spirit of God. But he was God who came to be a man. So that righteousness is intrinsic to his nature, independent of anything he does or does not do. He does believe in himself. He does know 100%, if you can quantify it that way, that everything he does is right. He never questions or thinks, I made a mistake. I know there's a whole situation with the flood and he repented, but that was because of what we did. It wasn't because of what he did. It was because of what we did in response to this great gift of the creation and everything in it. So, I just want you to think about that. Righteousness. Does it have to be from works? And is that the only way we can know our God is righteous? Because people really do struggle with that sometimes because we end up judging Him when we determine what is the righteous thing, what is the good thing. And so obviously He should do it. And if he doesn't, then we struggle and we think there's something wrong. And sometimes people walk away. I would think that they never really had faith. But I don't really know. That's just my guess. I don't see how you could walk away unless you never had it to begin with. Because if you believe, then you know he always makes the right decision. It doesn't mean you won't question. I'm not saying never question. God, I don't understand. You know, Mary didn't understand so she asked questions that's okay 
even John the Baptist, he was the greatest prophet born of a woman. That's how we, one of the, as a side note, we know Jesus was not born of a woman. He was born of God because he was a prophet and he was much greater than John. John himself said so, obviously, being the son of God, he came out from God. Only God comes out from God. But yeah, the righteousness of God is something we don't attain to in our actions. We attain to the righteousness of God by believing in His righteousness, in His finished work, and trusting in whatever He might do next, or not do, will be the right decision. So it's not about us proving something to anyone, not even to Him. Because without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So that very faith itself can turn into the action. Because if you believe Him, and you hear Him, you're going to do what He says. It's just that He was the perfect example when He came here. He operated that way perfectly. He never failed. God in the flesh. It would make sense that God in the flesh would never fail. We are learning and growing. We will still struggle. We will still make mistakes. We will still doubt. We will still not have perfect faith. But this life is not so we can get perfect faith. It's so we can learn about the patience and the kindness and the love and the acceptance and the wisdom and all the good things of our God through our struggles. That's how we become the righteousness of God, as it says in the Bible. We become the righteousness of God by trusting in Him that He actually made a decision to take our sins away by taking all our sins on himself and destroying the works of the devil, as it says in 1 John 3 8. He did that. And that's something to really meditate on and think about. Because the more you believe that, the more you can be free from all of this stuff your own will, your flesh, your carnal nature, all of that. You, you shed that by seeing him more clearly. Because the more clearly you see him, the more you will trust him the more you buckle down and determine to get your flesh under control, the more you'll see yourself. And as long as you're staring at your own navel, you're not going to get a good view of him. So thanks for watching, and God continue to bless us all. In Jesus' name, amen.